Hello, Himo friends, and welcome to this new episode of our Longsword Guard series. Today, we are going to give a look to Porta di Ferro Mezzano. Porta di Ferro Mezzana is mainly a defensive guard, which, as Fiora says, it's really hard to break. So it is really hard to approach this kind of guard in a safe way while avoiding being hit in the meantime or by trying to close the main line of attack of this guard, which is actually the center line from below, which is the hardest line to close with the longsword, generally speaking. Maestro Fiore tells us that it is better to enter in this kind of guard if we are using a longer sword. So it is completely the opposite if compared to our regular, let's call it, Porta di Ferro that we explored in the first episode of this series. This is because of a couple of simple motivations. The first one being the attacks that this guard can land, generally speaking. The first one being the thrust, and the second one being Sotani, generally speaking, landed with the full surge and aimed toward the hands. Both these attacks, generally speaking, benefit a lot from extra range. The other motivation is defensive, and as I mentioned before, here we see the opposite if compared to our regular Porta di Ferro that we have seen in the first episode, which I mentioned before. So, while talking about especially defensive movements, while moving out from our regular Porta de Ferro, we have more of a lateral component to our movements, generally speaking, our parries. Instead, from Porta di Ferro Mezzana, we have, generally speaking, more a vertical component compared to a lateral one. Now, while talking about defensive action, it is crucial to be fast because we are reacting to the opponent attack. Now, generally speaking, it is easier to react from Porta di Ferro with a lateral movement with a shorter sword, because we have lesser leverage that goes against our defensive movement. Instead, it is better to approach a vertical path while defending with a longer sword, and this is why Porta di Ferro Mezzana is the better choice in this case. In fact, Maestro Fiore tells us that Porta di Ferro Mezzana rebatte, so beat, the opponent swords, the opponent spade, in erto, so above. This action can be defensive, of course, or offensive while approaching an opponent sitting in longa. Porta di Ferro Mezzana is also the arriving point, the ending position of some of our fendenti. The more vertical fendenti, compared to the more diagonal one, tend to end in Porta di Ferro Mezzana. In fact, as we have seen for Posta Longa, and we will see for every centered guard in front of us, we don't have a picture perfect perpendicular Porta di Ferro Mezzana. Whatever position which is in front of our body and not on the side of it is Porta di Ferro Mezzana. So it is not only the perfectly vertical fendente which reaches Porta di Ferro Mezzana but also defendenti at an angle with a steeper angle compared to the more diagonal one, which ends up instead, for example, to dente di cinghiale, which we are going to see in a couple episodes. Very good, let's now give a look to the simple, while effective, offensive actions from Porta di Ferro Mezzana. Thrusting is the only direct attack aimed at the head or torso that can be landed effectively from here and being a thrust from below, it tends to be really scary. Even while fencing with feathers and protective equipment, being the thrust from below, the one which delivers more power and tends to make the blade flexion lesser eager to start, you should pay attention to it a little bit more while delivering it. The second offensive action that you may end up landing from Porta di Ferro Mezzana is the full sedge cut toward the opponent hands, the full sedge sotano. As I already mentioned, this can be vertical or at a steep angle. When you are fencing an opponent with the weapon online, so in posta longa, you can beat their weapon upward. You can do it with various mechanics, crossing the line with either the two edge or full edge. The crucial point is creating an angle with your weapon to intercept the opponent's blade 
comfortably. Do not try to beat the weapon aside with a full edge sotano from here, it doesn't make sense. Then you can hit back with a cut. Fiore advises for a fendente, but you can also go for other cuts after beating the weapon upward. Now you have seen enough videos of this series and you should already be aware that you need to connect the poste through their various actions, namely cuts, thrusts, parries, beats, etc. to develop complex actions. So as Porta di Faramezzana moves toward the longer to attack, be it with a thrust or with a full sedge sotano, you can use the actions that you have seen in the posta longa video to deliver compound actions by feinting the first thrust and then landing a cavazione, for example. To defend, instead, Porta di Ferramezzana tends to move toward posta frontale, be it left or right. So, in the future video dedicated to posta frontale, you may find up additional ideas to build up from there. So, as we have seen, if we diligently connect together all the videos that we have already seen and the fighter one that you will see in the future, we will be able to access other plays entering in other guards, such as Longa, which is a crucial component of our fighting system. While talking about defensive actions, we have instead a couple of uh, really important options. Both options that arise, that start from Porta di Ferramezzana and uh, options that reach Porta di Ferramezzana, as we have seen also in our regular Porta di Ferro. So, let's give a look to the defensive actions of Porta di Ferramezzana. The main defensive action from Porta di Ferramezzana is the ribattere, which is the same exact movement we have seen used offensively against Posta Longa, but used as a defensive action. As before, Pay attention to put your weapon at an angle, to properly catch the incoming action, be it a cut or a thrust. The second defensive action is a counter to an attack landed by Porta di Ferro Mezzana itself. Funny enough. From Posta Longa or Posta Breve, if our hands are threatened by a full edge cut, we can cross it by reaching our Porta di Ferro Mezzana, pairing it with the angle created by the cross guard and the blade. Porta di Ferro Mezzana has another defensive ability, which, funny enough, is passive, not active. This posta works as a deterrence kind of position, as it threatens a thrust from below, hard to catch and counter easily. Be it a double hit or a clean hit, the risk is behind the iron door. Oh my god, this one was so bad. Anyway, Approaching Porta di Ferro Mezzana with Longa can lead to a hand snipe. Closing the line and approaching may lead to a cavazione and thrust. So a smart plan needs to be created to approach this guard safely. Very good. So we have seen the main defensive and offensive actions, the main defensive and offensive options from and to also Porta di Ferro Mezzana. So, Let's now give a look to the glossa and of course I will translate it for you. Very good. So, questa è mezzana porta di ferro perché sta in mezzo e è una forte guardia. So, this is mezzana porta di ferro, so porta di ferro mezzana, because it stays in the middle, perché sta in mezzo, in mezzo of our figure, so in the middle of our figure, ed è una forte guardia, and because it is a strong guard, so porta di ferro, is a strong uh, image, so an iron door, and this is why it represents a strong guard. Maella vuole longa spada, so she wants a longer sword. E la butta forte punte e rebatte per forza le spade in erto. And she throws very good strong thrusts and also beats upward the opponent's sword. E torna con l'offendente per la testa o per gli brazzi and uh, goes back on the same path, basically, with a fendente, for the head or for the arms, as usual. <laughs> e pure torna in la sua guardia, and then goes back into the same uh, guard position. E ven chiamata porta perché la è forte. So, 
uh, it is called porta, so it is called the door, because it is strong. Ed è forte guardia, che male se può rompere senza pericolo a venire alle strette. And it is a strong guard, which is hard to break without the risk of getting into stretto, so into close play. Very good people, we have explored our Porta di Ferro Mezzana, which is a relatively easier guard to explore compared to the others, because it has fewer options in general. But at the same time, it is a really important guard in our system, and it is especially useful if you are using a longer longsword, generally speaking. Anyway, we are at the end of this video. Thanks for watching as always. Remember that if you want to support me and the channel, you can do it through my Patreon page. The link is in the description, in which you can also find a lot of exclusive contents for you. Again, thanks for watching, and as always, see you next time.